All right, so today we're looking at applications of quadratics for the first time. And today's lesson is really just kind of illustrate that there are quadratic relationships in real life kind of all around us. And, you, you know, you've seen quadratic shapes all over the place, even something as silly as, you know, the McDonald's arches or you know, the shape of a banana or, you know, bridges or there's, you know, whatever. Like you see these, these parabolas kind of all over the place. And so today what I kind of wanted to focus on was I wanted you guys to think about just kind of the real-life situations that you might see. So we're going to be looking at graphs today of parabolas, and we're going to be interpreting them and what they mean in real life. Now, I'm actually doing a video not from the notes today, but just from kind of an exploratory paper because I think it's a little bit, um, a little bit better, actually. So if this looks a little different, that's why. All right, here we go. Jan kicked a ball straight up into the air. The graph represents the height of the ball at time t. All right, so we've got feet for our vertical axis and seconds for our horizontal axis. And we're going to answer the questions based on this graph. So the first thing we see is, when is the ball on the ground? All right, well, it starts on the ground, and it ends up on the ground. And so if the question is when, then we're looking for time, which means we're at zero seconds and also at eight seconds, right? Because zero feet from the ground would be the ground. Uh, let's see the next question here. What is the maximum height of the ball? And so in this instance, we're looking to see uh, how high did it get at its highest. And that point is going to be right here. That's the highest point on the graph. And if we look at this, we can see that the maximum height, we go to the, to the y-axis, right, because feet, and we can see that it hits, <laughs> I'm having issues here, we can see that it hits right here at about 9 feet. All right, when is the ball at its highest? So we're actually looking at that same point but we're looking for when, right? This is the maximum height. So we gotta look at the x-axis, right? So it looks like it's happening at four seconds, right? It's nine feet at four seconds. Y'all, this would be the vertex, right? Four comma nine. And you should be able to interpret that and say, okay, after four seconds, the ball is nine feet from the ground. Let's see here. When is the height of the ball? Six feet. Well, let's take a look. When is the height of the ball? Six feet. We see that it's six feet right here, and that point is at one second. But be careful because it actually is six feet again over here, which is at seven seconds. So it happens twice, right? That makes sense because it rises up and comes back down, so it hits six feet twice. Next question, how many seconds? is the ball above six feet? And this is a great question, and it is a question that you will see again, so I definitely want to talk about it. How many seconds is the ball above six feet? Let's look at this graph. Okay, if I were to say that this portion of the graph is all above six feet, I think you would agree with me, right? So we wanna know how much time is passing from this point to this point. And what we can do is we can just jump points. Okay, I know that sounds kind of strange, but just watch. How much time, well, let's see, that's one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, right? Because I'm just counting by one down here. So that is six seconds total. So this right here, how many is it above six feet? We counted from six feet to six feet, and which was six seconds. Another way to do this is you can just look, use the question above and say seven minus one is equal to six, right? Because at seven seconds, it was at seven, at seven seconds, it was at six feet. And at one second, it was at six feet. So we can subtract them to know how long it was between those points. And finally, last but not least, is the graph a function? That is a yes. You guys hopefully remember your vertical line test which means any vertical line I draw only hits my graph once, which means that it is a valid function. All right, it is a function. The last part of this question asks for the domain and the range. So let's go ahead and let's set those up. And we definitely need to clarify something here. For the last few videos, I've talked about how for quadratics, for parabolas, the domain is all real numbers. I'm actually gonna put all real numbers and I'm going to put a cross through it. That is not the domain this time. Because in this case, my domain, right, x values, 
I was talking about seconds. It's talking about time. If it's talking about time, there are definitely some values that are off limits. For example, negative numbers, right? And, and, and when we have a specific example like this, we have to use the data. All right, you guys, if there had been arrows and this was just some generic graph, we could have said all real numbers. But no, this is an actual situation with real data, so we have to only use the points we're given. So my x values, remember x values go from the furthest left to the furthest right. So what are my x values from the furthest left to the furthest right? Well, it looks like they are just from 0 to 8, right? 0 to 8. This right here, these are all the x values that were used. And so let's remember how this notation looks. We're going to say 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 8. It's always written from least to greatest, which is why we use less than signs in both places. All right, talk about the range now. The range in this case, we go from the highest, sorry, the lowest point to the highest point. Well, we know it started on the ground, right? We know it started at the ground at zero feet. We're using y because it's range. And what's the highest height? We already talked about this right up here at nine feet. So some takeaways from this video, you guys. Domain and range from an actual rap application or real life situation, you got to think about it. You gotta look at your graph, you gotta look at your data. Uh, the last thing I want you guys to make sure that you pay attention to are these questions where it talks about how many seconds is the ball above a certain height. I think the easiest way to do that is just to subtract the seconds from the two points that you have. All right, or you can do this little jumpy thing on your graph. All right, good luck.